Content warning, please be advised that this video contains James Desborough. Hey everyone, welcome to the Chronicles of Crimson Helm. I am uh, here today with Serial Force guest game master James Desborough. Hi James. Hello. <laughs> so um, James, you have a uh, company for tabletop RPGs and other games uh, called uh, Postmortem Studios. What can you tell us about it? Uh, so I did a bit of freelancing back in the day uh, for various companies, and that was alongside a regular job. And then the dot-com bubble burst, <laughs> and I was out of work for about 18 months. So I just thought, screw it, and started my own company. And I've just been working for myself ever since. Um, I write fiction, I write tabletop RPGs, I consult with people who want to produce their own games and I produce supporting material for that. I still do some freelance, but that's mostly for apps, um, app games, things like that, writing a little bit of background for them. I tend towards sort of horror, science fiction, dark fantasy, stuff with a with a bit of edge, but not from wanting to, to shock or upset anybody more just that I find those to be the areas of story that are in interesting, things that give you give you pause, things that engage you, um, are things that, that push a few buttons. Um, if you want to buy my stuff, <laughs> you can go to <laughs> post-mort.com um, yes. and that gives links to everything, so. And I wanna say that I personally bought one of your stuff, books, uh, so Mechanicians of the Space Princess, which is like, Space, space opera in the vein of like heavy metal magazine and all that stuff, uh, Metal Hurlant. And so it's, uh, yeah, it's a fun book. Um, um, and uh, of course, everything else you mentioned. Um, you know, I actually have to say that as, as a side note, it's kind of funny to me uh, on a personal note because about 20 years ago, I had a friend, uh, a female player in GM, who was really angry about your uh, guy to, <laughs> to female players. And, and that was, that was like, so I find it really funny. I'm definitely gonna tell her that we're doing the serial. Uh, <laughs> just gonna mention this as I know. Did she take it? Did she take it seriously? Did she think it was a? You know, James. I, I think these days she wouldn't like because it's not like I. I um, my friends are not like the easily offended type or anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a context of back in the day. Like it, it, you know how it's kind of funny how th this book you wrote. Um, um, Back in the day, it was fine. In today, some people in back like, oh my, you know, like because it's humor. You know, humor is. Yeah. You take chances with humor, and sometimes it works. Sometimes other people are going to be like, oh, that was too much, or people are like that was fine. And um, and I do think that humor needs to take risks anyway. I personally never read it, um, but <laughs> I just remember the rant about it. You know, like, and um, I, I think the context, and I'm going to be very, very straight up front about this is. Uh, today, uh, we're in a really good environment for uh, geeks uh, who are uh, anyone, like uh, men, women, whatever people want to identify, whatever, wherever they're from. We're in the most inclusive geek moment ever. And, um, and uh, because, you know, like I'm almost 40 at this point. So I've, I've been through the whole like uh, era of um, I, like it, being a geek lost its edge because it used to be like when I used to tell people I was a geek and they were like, you? No, you know, like, whereas now it's almost <laughs> like everyone's kind of like a, a geek on the weekends, but they're really just wanting to socialize or something. So uh, all of that to say, <laughs> so all that to say, James, that <laughs> back then uh, to be a female uh, tabletop role player was to go into a store and have a lot of like smelly people go, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just saying it, go like, <gasps> You know, like, so I, I think there was a lot that came with it. Now, um, she, you know, she went back to university and all these <laughs> young girls are playing fifth edition. She was like, what the, you know, like it was just such a different environment. <laughs> well, and uh, well, I, I think, I think these days she wouldn't care. You know, like, I think it's back then it was just too, um, you know, too much in the moment yeah. of, of dealing well, with stuff. And again, I have no idea what. what <laughs> well, I don't, I don't want to get, I don't want to get too sidetracked into <laughs> discussing my story past and everything. That's my bad. I just had to mention it. No, it's okay. It's my fault. Let's go but over it. My, my first big break was The Munchkin's Guide to Power Gaming, the Steve Jackson yeah. Games, which was a comedy book. And so that's all anyone wanted me to write for ages. Yeah. Um, so that's why I ended up writing The Slayer's Guide to Female Gamers for Mongoose Publishing. But 
I'm actually surprised at her reaction because most women I talked to yeah. uh, at the time understood that the target of the jokes was the, the smelly, the smelly gamers yeah, who, yeah. Were, who were overexcited when a girl came into a gaming store. So those were the ones I was I was taking a dig at. <laughs> and, and again, you know, I don't know how in depth she went. Maybe what happened was she kind of did an overview and um you know just saw like the, the main guidelines like uh and i don't know i just thought it was kind of funny so, to be like so that, you know <laughs> that said we did run into trouble because an american distributor thought that it was actually a guide on how to kill women and refused to stock it so. <laughs> but it wasn't i promise god <laughs> i didn't i didn't know that oh yeah. that's funny oh that is funny <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Uh, I, you know, I wanted to say, like, it has nothing to do with the show, but it was just on a personal level. It was so funny to me that I'll be like, "Hey, it's the guy who wrote that book." Remember? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's kind of funny because, uh, as far as shocking material goes, they're so apologetic about it. I find, like, compared to so many other people who are like so happy to like shock or whatever, and and you're like. I'm sorry. I just want to tell my stories. You know, I, I don't mean to shock her. It, it's it's really, uh, yeah, it's really funny. Um, okay, so uh, James, tell me uh, for this serial because uh, every serial uh, game masters get to bring their own um, rules or styles or whatever, and I do keep them in consideration when I play a Crimson Hound. Um, like uh, you know, sometimes I'll be more careful. Otherwise, I'll be more action movie esque. It kind of depends on what's also what's um, brought to me in terms of like uh, tone and style and where kind of it where it's um, um, what the GM is going for as well. I try to respond to that. So, what can you tell us regarding um, whatever you want to share? And of course, if there's any variant rules. Well, because this is meant to be like a serial, um, I've prepped more than I normally do for games. Normally, I'm very much an improvisational games master, so I feed off what the other people say and do uh, and want from a game. So I'm actually stepping outside my my normal style a bit. So I've tried to arrange it in the same form as a pulp story. So like four acts, uh, quite quite tight, quite quite action oriented. I think a lot of games publishers like myself love the pulps, and so this all yes. sounded very much like a pulp serial. So that's the style I've tried to go for. So over the top villains, uh, you know, femme fatales, action, but you know, you can surrender and you'll be put in an elaborate death trap <laughs> or, or you know, okay. things like that. So that's, uh, that's the style Batman, I'm going for. <laughs> Not quite so know. camp. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, more like Doc Savage or The Shadow. Yeah, no, I know. I, 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 if, Although I have to say, like everyone considers '60s Batman to be this very lighthearted thing, but some of those traps, man, jeez. Okay, uh, <laughs> when you when you think about it, they never work. But if they were to work, like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so okay, that's that's good to know. I'll certainly keep that in mind. So, um, and again, you know, like um, I never stated this in camera, but I try to also be a player who tries to advance the story. Um, Almost no matter what, sometimes. So uh, you know, like uh, I don't, I don't ask the GMs to also be like uh, these. Uh, obviously, you know, the GM will, will uh, move the story forward as well and all that, and they have the story to tell. But I never, uh, I try to not be a kind of player who waits around, you know, uh, for things to happen. So uh, in that sense, I try to make it easy. Um, anyway, very well. Uh, let's get started. Okay. So, uh, your friend and contact, Beggar Bob, the mysterious shadow messenger, has been to see you, and he says that there's a case that should interest you. He's set up a meeting in the back lot of a convenience store in the shadow of surrounding, towering cyberpunk buildings. 
So that's really all he's told you, um, except that it's a peculiar murder and there's a very distraught woman involved and that it just it seems strange it seems weird in all the right ways so he's given you a time and a place to meet this woman called unasul and that's where we pick up <clears throat> very well anasul correct yeah unasul oh okay unasul yep Okay. At, at first, I heard Anna Sue. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, very well. So, the, since I'm meeting in the back of a convenience store, and like there, and conceivably, there's maybe people passing by and all that. Um, what I'll do is uh, I will have my um, my uh, vigilante outfit and all that, but over it, I'm just gonna wear like this trench coat, kind of like Ninja Turtle style, you know, when they <laughs> with, with the uh, with the collar turned up. So you yeah, can exactly. Yeah. Well, the, the cape already has kind of a color, but I have to turn up the trench coat color over that color and um, the uh, visor. Um, so the the what the Crimson Hound wears is this uh, visor, this kind of like a computer, augmented reality computer that he has on his face at all times, basically. But um, uh, normally he um, he kind of puts on this domino mask image on top of the visor that's sort of but in this case i'll just leave it kind of like shades um mm -hmm. so just to look like a normal person walking around basically um so uh, like bigger bob is going to recognize him anyway i don't think that's an issue uh but just yeah. to to not necessarily draw attention waiting behind a convenience store okay yeah. um so you you want to turn up before the meeting and wait for her to arrive or Oh, okay, so it's not Bear Bob who's going to be there. It's going to be the the woman. Yeah, question. Bob. Bob, um, Bob just told you where to where to meet her. Okay, is she? Um, th th does he give me any sort of description or or a photo or something? He says you'll you'll know it's her. Okay. Um, I do try to. Yeah, I'm going to arrive there a bit early, like um. What I'll do is, uh, how much ahead of time do I know this of this meeting? Uh, he's told you the night before, so night before. You've got, so you've got a day. Okay, uh, I do trust Beggar Bob, so I'm not gonna go through all of the uh, setup I would do if it was this like uh, completely untrustworthy source, and where then I would I would go during the day to scope the place out and all that. Uh, you know what? Actually, I'll still do that. I'll still have a look at the place during the day. Just um, I'll go grab like buy a drink or something at a convenience store and just kind of have a quick look but i'm not like um i'm not gonna ask i'm not gonna ask you to describe every single alley but i just want to state that the crimson held us take a moment to familiarize himself with the environment see if there are any um places where it seems you know because the towers are really high but is there some somewhere where someone could hide in from the top or something or um right. yeah. so there's um a small sort of in, inner city road that runs across the front of the convenience store. Uh, the convenience store is hemmed in on three sides by towers. Um, they're residential towers um, and a mix of sort of lower class and middle class um, mm -hmm. apartments. But they're really just kind of almost featureless, you know, grey concrete and steel slabs, pretty yeah. much. Um, with a with a few decorations, the odd gargoyle here and there, yes. and uh, big virtuality and holographic and neon signs advertising, you know, all, all kinds of things. You can't see those so much during the day, apart from through your augmented reality goggles. But at night, it should be fairly well lit up. The convenience yeah. store almost seems out of place. Um, it's pretty run down and shabby, but does seem to get quite a lot of business. But most of the business is foot traffic from the surrounding buildings. The back lot is a parking lot. The asphalt's all torn up. There's yeah, weeds and stuff springing out. Um, there's a, a few sort of big industrial waste disposal bins out the back there. And it looks like a lot of the people in the surrounding buildings end up using those, even though they're meant for the convenience store. Yeah. So there's trash sort of spilling out everywhere. Uh, there's a, a raggedy ass fence around three sides 
um, with a gateway for any cars that do want to come in and, and park to go into the convenience store. The store itself is uh, one level. Um, again, pr pretty run down, but still in operation. Um, it mostly seems to be uh, a convenience store in inverted commas. Like they've got a few snacks, a few yeah. soft drinks, but most of it is selling liquor and sort of um, legal drugs seems to be its its thing. Okay, very well. Um, okay, yeah, so just by uh, have a look at the place. Again, it's better Bob setting up the meeting. I do trust him, so uh, for better or worse. So I'm going to just, uh, I'll just show up at, like a little bit ahead of the time, uh, like half an hour before and wait there. And the way I described before, I'm not going to go through any elaborate things for, for getting the game started. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So you go at the. Uh, yes, I do want to establish uh, it's kind of like a little detail, but uh, because of uh, the fact that from Serial 3, he still doesn't know if he did or didn't murder a woman, so he's very unshaved. He's very, very, uh, he's not doing well at the moment. Uh, I kind of mm. want to mention where he's at. Might might come in uh, into play or not. But, uh, I do well, want to mention he's not in a good mood right now. <laughs> <laughs> perhaps, perhaps helping this woman is a path to redemption and self-acceptance. Yes. So, yeah, or he doesn't even know, you know, like that's a problem. That's the worst <laughs> part. Does he need to redeem himself? Does he need to find out who set him up? He doesn't even know. So it's it's just, I want to establish that he's he's in a bad place right now, like not sleeping well, unshaved, and uh, it might, uh, you know, just a setup of uh, where he's at. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll show up like maybe like uh, half an hour before the meeting time just to make sure. Okay. Um, so night falls. It's a quite still, fairly warm night for the for the time of year, so the the pollution from the city isn't blowing away or, or clearing, um, since most cars and so on are, are electric or other alternative forms. The pollution smell is more ozone than exhaust, more than anything else, from all the signs and the devices and the electric vehicles and, and so on. Um, it never really gets dark except in the alleys so out here under the mostly blue neon lights and virtual light from the signs and the holograms everything's got a slight sort of blue gray tint to it the back lot doesn't really seem to see any activity at all when you came the front of the convenience store there were quite a lot of you know kids punks and so on from the from the surrounding buildings hanging out there drinking and and partying, listening to music from cars and so on. Once you go around the back, that's muted a bit. So there's just a sort of <laughs> from the bass line in, in the background. But no one really seems to be back here. Um, mm -hmm. So time passes. About five minutes before your meeting's scheduled, um, a little two-man city car comes in through the gate and parks up sort of haphazardly off to one side of the convenience store. Uh, it's a little white city car uh, with sort of gold trim, uh, which catches the light from the surrounding buildings and their signs. Um, an elegant looking woman gets out and sort of leans against the, the front of the car. Um, she's wearing a quite stylish black dress, um, sort of low heels. Uh, she takes a cigarette out of her purse and lights it. Uh, in the brief light from the flame, you see long, straight, blonde hair down one side of her, her face. And um, your goggles, do they enhance your vision at all, or is it just the augmented reality stuff? Well, the Crimson Hound himself can see in the dark. So if okay. anything, the goggles sometimes get in the way of his uh, night vision. But right now it's turned off. It's just in shades mode. So um, he, he himself can see in the dark. Of course... Infravision, I, we get into the whole debate if there's a lot of neons and all that. It's kind of like the daredevil thing, like, uh, what can he clearly see or not? Up to you. Uh, yeah. You could argue that infravision works with heat. So uh, if at some point someone's standing next to like a really powerful neon or something, might yeah. mess with that. Um, I'm guessing he can't see colors in the complete darkness. You know, like it, it's one of those things, like, mm. how does that work? Uh, I let the GMs <laughs> have fun with it. But that, yeah, the, the Crimson Hound is um, a dampier. 
so I have vampire, so he does see in the dark. It's one of the few things he has going for him, I guess you could say, along with some of the mm. bad things that go along with that. Okay, so, well, between the darkness, which reduces your sort of color range, even with uh, night vision, and with all the holographic lights and the neons and so on, throwing the sort of light balance off, you can't really make out the colors too well, mm -hmm. except in that in that flare of light from the lighter, uh, where yeah. you caught sight of her hair. But you can see that she looks quite haggard, drawn, tired. Uh, there's black rings under her eyes. She looks like she's tried to cover that up a bit by really going in heavy on the eyeliner. But you can tell she looks exhausted. Yeah, so uh, I'm guessing it's probably her. Um, so I'm just going to slowly approach, but very slowly. Uh, and whether it's her or not, I don't want her to suddenly be uh, like too wary of this guy coming out of the shadows with like with shades and a black coat. So I'm, I'm like being very careful in high approach, very slowly. I don't want to. I want to see her reaction. You know, like is she expecting someone, or is she just stopping right there to have a cigarette? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're not trying to hide yourself or anything, and you're being slow and, and careful. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to do the the, the COVID shiny thing of like, uh, boo, you know, how those shadows. I'm, <laughs> I think in this case it wouldn't be appropriate necessarily, um, or at all. <laughs> so, just, uh, you know, again, I trust bigger Bob. It's not like I'm um, in other moments for sure. Almost no matter what, to a fault, certainly to a fault, he might have tried to look scary in that moment as he gauges the person, but. Again, uh, this was set up by someone he trusts, so let's not play games here uh, yeah, for now. So it, it's not really an I'm Batman moment, really, is it? Uh, what's kind of funny, and I, <laughs> I guess this is kind of like an out-of-game comment, but I do play it very uh, self-aware. So there's moments where he does that, that it's definitely going to work. And there's moments where, of course, with any tabletop RPG, like uh, you're going to roll the dice, and some people are like, yeah, I'm not impressed, man. You know, especially like... Uh, so it, I, I don't try to have him interact with people all the time that way at all. But there's going to be moments where he's going to try those things, and sometimes they're not going to work, which is uh, you know also fun yeah. at times. Um, but no, in, in this case, again, like a uh, woman smoking alone in the alley might or might not be a person who needs help. If it's a person who needs help, might also have been gone through some stuff. So I'm going to try to, and you know, Crimson Holland is already probably looking a bit scary at the moment. So. Again, like slow approach, trying to gauge if that's the right person on top of that. So. Okay. So when she first notices you, uh, she clutch, clutches her purse and, and pops it open and mm -hmm. keeps her eye, eyes on you and then seems to figure out that you're the person she's supposed to meet and relaxes though she leaves her right hand resting on her purse, which is still open. I, almost, almost as if to... By now, I'm pretty sure it's her. So I'm, I'm just like flicking on the, the domino mask imagery. Like it turns on like, you know, a little buzz. Yeah. And uh, it's like this comic book red domino mask with the white eyes that goes over the visor. So and kind of like those um, kind of like those LED masks you can get that you can configure with your smartphone to be different things. But just the, it's the red domino mask, yeah. You know, if ever I get enough subscribers, I might even invest into something like that. But um, I, I think they're, they're not know, that I, expensive. I, no, okay. No, I, you just you just kind of told me this thing exists, actually. <laughs> <laughs> just so you know, I'll, but I'll, is it like is it like a dots or is it an actual clear picture? Uh, the more expensive ones are almost an LED screen, but uh, most of them are dots. Right. Yeah, so well, like, maybe more shaped like goggles, though. You know, like so uh, it's. Um, I think what you mean is more like uh, this, really like this course yeah. thing. You're, uh, yeah. So obviously his would be uh, more practical, I guess, for uh, uh, getting punched in the face if need be. <laughs> so when she sees when she sees the flash of red, she she relaxes a bit more and sort of leans back against the car. Um, Mister Hound. You can call me Crimson. So I, I do say that with a hint of of humor. You know, try to yeah. Ease it. Um, she she holds out her hand to towards you. So I shake her hand, so she can. She'll also see I have like there's the red glove there. Yeah, so she she shakes your hand. Um, in the in the darkness with your enhanced vision, you can see that uh, she's wearing nail polish, but it hasn't been touched up in a couple of days, so it's quite chipped and and flaking away. So it, that kind of goes with the whole 
exhausted. Clearly, she's been in distress for a yeah. for a while. Uh, your friend uh, said you could help me. I'm hoping I can. If you tell me what's going on, I'll see what I can do. My husband, my, uh, my, my fiance, we were supposed to be married in a few days. He was killed. She's clearly finding it um, difficult to open up to a stranger. She lights another cigarette off the end of this one, flicks it away, sort of sparks on the, on the ground and take, takes a long steadying drag. So what, what I say next, it, it, I said very matter-of-factly to ease her into saying what's next. So I, I asked, by what? I don't know exactly. The, the Vigilari won't let me see the body. They won't let me back into our apartment. Um, we both worked for, uh, for the Empire's diplomatic service. Um, so this is an element I've introduced. The Empire or L'Empire is um, a, a foreign state. So they they worked for the diplomatic service for this foreign state. They've made representations, but still nothing. Um, and there's only there's only so much we can ask. So that's when you try to go to your place of Vigilari where they inform you, right? Yes, the whole place has been locked down. Um, our, our government is asking for, for us to be informed of, of what's happened, what's gone on, but we're not getting anywhere. Um, and I just, I want to know what happened. They say it's a murder, and if it is a murder, then I want justice. But the Vigilari seem to be interfering, so I mean, you operate outside the law. The law doesn't seem to be helping. If you can get me, if you can get us justice, I'd... I'd trust you more, I think. How do you know Bob? Bob found me. Um, I passed by him on the on the street um, some time ago. I, I put some money in his cup and he said he owed me. Then after this happened, he, he found found me drinking yeah. in, in a bar and he said, I'm going to pay you back. Um, yeah, the thing about Bob is I started to get a feeling he doesn't need the money. He just wants to know who he's dealing with. And, you know, don't feel bad. He found me too. So I'm equally confused about him, but he's a good person, if he is a person. Anyway, um, can you give me your address? I'll see uh, what I can find out. Okay, so um, she fiddles in a, her purse, takes out a, a card, uh, like a, a business card, hands it to you. So what's the name on it? Uh, so her name, mm -hmm. Unasu. Um, okay. A diplomatic, uh, what would she be? A diplomatic administrator for Le Empire. Okay. Uh, it's got her. I was wondering if it would be the husband's name or hers in the or just, the just hers yeah, uh, on yeah. this one. Um, then it's got the address for the embassy on one side, and it's got her contact details on the other. Okay. Okay, so that's the professional address, um, but. Ooh. Your, your husband died where you were residing at the moment, right? Yes, my personal address is on the other side. Ah, so yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it says uh, apartment 123 Mockingbird Tower. Three Mockingbird Tower. A better place than I'm used to going. Do you have a, pa do you have a pass card for me? Uh, she rummages in her, her purse again and gives you a, a black swipe card. That should get you into the building at least. Thank you. I'm gonna need you to uh, buy me a suit. I can I can do that. Yes, uh, the type of place I normally go to 
what I wear makes a statement. In this case, it might get me nowhere. So I do need to fit the, your kind of building. OK. Um, actually, I think I can do one better. She looks you up and down. Um, get in the car. Very well. Again, uh, you know, Bob wouldn't have set me up, I'm thinking. So I'm going to I get into the car. OK. It's quite cramped. Um, but it's fairly high tech, fairly well made. She doesn't really say much um, to you as as you drive. Uh, she slows down a couple of times to wipe tears away from her eyes, yeah. and eventually um, pulls in to a storage block, great big cuboid building, sort of roughly painted in in yellow. It just looks like it's storage containers. Um, so she she gets out briefly talks with one of the security guards that looks after the place and comes back and leads you to a storage container. 